Welcome to the second part of getting started with Node.js for front-end developers. Last time we built this little Hello World web server. In this part we're going to step it up a notch by introducing the concept of routing and we'll learn how to make our server dynamic by responding to query parameters. We're going to be using the Express framework to help us with this. Express is the most popular JavaScript framework for building server-side applications in Node. So why do we need it? Put simply, the bare bones that Node provides makes some simple tasks which will be needed in every web application a bit on the tedious side. Things like routing, error handling, performing certain actions on every request, and dealing with headers and post requests require a fair bit of boilerplate to get it up and running, if you're just using the HTTP module directly, that is. With Express, these things are a breeze, so let's get started. First, we need to set up a project and install Express. So, you'll want to create a new folder and open it in your IDE or editor and then you need to get up a terminal in that folder and do npm init. This is just to initialize this folder as a node application complete with a package.json file. Just press enter to all the questions it asks you and it'll put in defaults. At the end, you will see this has created a bare bones package.json file. In Node, npm is the package manager which allows us to install third-party packages and modules, like Express for example. It uses the package.json file to store a list of the packages which our project relies on as dependencies. All dependencies will be installed into a node underscore modules folder within our project. This folder gets very large and also contains third-party code. This means if we ever come to put our code in source control, we don't want our node modules to end up in there with it. As um, each time we did a commit and looked at the diff, um, all the changes to the third party code would show up. We don't want that. So we would ignore node modules in source control. This of course means when we clone our projects from source control, they will have no node modules. When this happens, we can use the npm install command and it will read our project's dependencies from the package.json file, download them and install them. So with that explanation out of the way, it's time to install Express. It's very simple. We do npm install dash dash save Express. The dash dash save tells npm to add this to our package.json as well as downloading and installing it. When all of that's done, we look in the package.json file and we see that a dependency has indeed been added for Express. So now's the time to use it. So you need to create an index.js file just like we did before and we're going to require Express. Next, we call express as a function and we store the result of this in a variable called app. And then we do app.get and it takes two arguments. The first is a string, which is just a slash. The second is a callback function again with request and response as arguments. And then all the function does is response.send with the string hello world as an argument to send. Finally, we need to do app.listen passing the argument of 9000 to the listen function. Now for the explanation of what all that means. This is almost the equivalent of what we did previously with the HTTP module. We create an app and we use it to listen on port 9000 for requests. Then we have the app.get function and here we do run into some differences to what we did before. In the example using the HTTP module, our server would respond to all requests with the hello world response. So these requests, they could be gets, puts, posts, anything, any path as well. So slash foo would return hello world just the same as adding no path like I showed previously. With express, it's different. We still have a callback function here to handle our requests, just like with HTTP. 
only this time it will only be called for certain requests which match a criteria. So what is that criteria? The fact that we're using the get function means the callback will only respond to get requests, so not for posts or any other type of request. The first argument to this is a path which must be matched in order for the callback to be called. It's a string, and in this case, it's just a slash representing the site's root or index path, whatever you want to call it. So, in summary, the callback will be called and handle the request only for get requests made to slash. This is what's great about Express. To do this with the raw HTTP module, we'd have to examine the request within the callback to work out if it was a get and what the path was, then respond accordingly. Too much boilerplate for my liking. Again, we have the response and request objects available to us as arguments to the callback, but these are Express's special request and response objects, and they're easier to use than the HTTP one. We will just call response.send with our hello world string, and the status will be 200 by default. So now we need to start the application. Just as before, we go to the terminal and we just do node index.js. In the browser, you can see that when we visit localhost on port 9000, we get hello world. If you try and go to another path, say slash foo, you'll see we get an error message saying we cannot get slash foo. This is because the handler we added was specifically just for the slash path. Let's use query string parameters to make this a little more dynamic. So we want to add another call to app dot get. This time we will be handling get requests to slash dynamic. The idea here is for someone to go to slash dynamic with a query string param called name and it will return hello and then the name in the response. For the callback we're going to extract the name param from request.query. The query property is an object containing key value pairs of the query string parameters. We then want to do response.send with hello and the name, but also default to anon just in case name is undefined. So now we save that, and we also, unfortunately, we need to restart the web server. There's no live reload going on here. We'll do something about that later though. So in the browser, if we visit slash dynamic, we get hello anon. And then if we add a query string with a name value, we get our name. So each of these are what we'd call roots. This is much like you do routing in a single page front end app. So you should be somewhat familiar with this. You match a path and that's a route. Now we'll probably look at this in more detail where we do some more advanced routing when we come to do our API. But for now, this is fine. So I want you just to copy your dynamic route. Just copy paste it. And then there where we've got slash dynamic, we're going to change it to slash dynamic slash colon name. Now the presence of colon means anything matched in this part of the URL becomes a param and it becomes available to us in request.params, and this is a set of key value pairs, just like request.query. So we now get our name from request.params, and we restart the application now. So if we refresh the page, we can see that our first dynamic URL still works. Now we're going to remove the query string and add slash Elvis to the end of the URL, and of course we get hello Elvis. This has matched our second route, and the Elvis part of the URL has been matched by colon name. And this is what we add to the response that we return to the browser, and it's why we see Elvis in the browser. So this is still pretty simple, but we're still laying the groundwork here. Join me next time when I'll be explaining exactly what a REST API is, what the API we're going to be building will look like, and how we can store data in it in a quick and easy way without having to learn all about databases. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, um, subscribe to see more of the series as they're released, 
And don't forget, very important, to also click the bell icon, otherwise you won't receive notifications when I release new videos. Also, I'll be putting a link to my mailing list in the comments. So click on that and get on my mailing list if you want to hear what I have to say about JavaScript, motivation and careers, things like that. Thanks for watching.